Ah, yes, fair food. One of the things that our childhood gravitates to, we're frolicking through all the rides and the yummy corn dogs, and yet it's one of those food areas that hasn't really evolved. And I think it's time. Okay, so today we're making corn dogs, but not just regular corn dogs. Do we ever do it regularly here, huh? Do we? Making them at home means you have all the leverage. You can do anything you want. You can use any kind of sausage. Make your own sausage. Use any hot dog. You could stuff it with ham if you wanted to instead. See where I'm going with this? Think! Think! But we're not gonna stop there. We're gonna make the ultra famous Korean corn dog. And although it's not necessarily as focused on corn and more so a panko fried, sort of pancake battered, potato encrusted, cheese stick hot dog? We wanna bring corn dogs back into the world in a way that they always should have been. So with all that said, let's make this. Shall we? Well, well, well. Welcome to the corn for you. Let me break this down quickly. We got Mr. Regular Corn Dog, okay? Nothing wrong with that. And the new king in town, or what I believe to be the Korean Corn Dog. So we shan't waste any more time, and let's begin with Mr. Traditional, because it's unbelievably and downright easy. Granted, if you were to make your own hot dogs, then it would take multiple hours longer, but it would also be volumes better, so. Hey, do whatever the heck you want, bud. First, start heating enough oil in a pot wide enough to fit your dogs and skewers in easily. Fill it up about halfway or three quarters of the way with vegetable oil and begin heating it to 350 Fahrenheit. Now, for your little corn dog batter, get a medium sized bowl and add three quarters of a cup or 140 grams of fine cornmeal, one and a quarter cup or 188 grams of all purpose flour, two teaspoons or nine grams of baking powder, one teaspoon or five grams of fine sea salt, and two tablespoons or 30 grams of granulated sugar, which I forgot at this stage. Whoops, real nice, Josh, looking like a true professional right now, but it's fine. I added it at the end and a kiss from Papa if you don't act like a buffoon like this. Anyway, give your dry mix some whiskey business down right by the water. Until thoroughly incorporated, then in a separate container was together one large egg, two and a half tablespoons or 32 grams of vegetable oil, and one and a quarter cup or 295 milliliters of buttermilk. Add the wet stuff to your dry stuff so that your dry stuff becomes wet, then whisk all that together until you get a homogenous batter. If it's too thick, feel free to add a small splash of buttermilk, but be aware that you want it thick enough to hold on to your wainer when you dip. With that being said, get yourself eight hot dogs or sausages of choice. If it was me, I would obviously use a nice quality thick boy sausage rather than a hot dog, but hey. Then using thick wooden skewers, link in the description for the ones I used, drive that skewer through your wiener lengthwise as to keep the skewer as centered as possible until the entire wiener is skewered. Then repeat with all your wieners. Once your oil is 350 degrees Fahrenheit, pour your batter into a tall skinny glass, dunk one of your wieners into the batter, then while constantly turning your wiener, add it to your oil, repeat with one to two more dogs, and fry for about three to five minutes, turning often or until the corn dog is fried and has reached a beautiful brown color. Remove from the oil and drain on a wire rack, then repeat with the rest of your dogs. That's actually it. This is a very simple version. So enjoy it simply. Dip it in some ketchup, some mustard, depending on your personal preference, or both, and enjoy. Before we move on, let's give this quick fair food a scrutinizing taste test and see how we did here. I'm Greasy, this is Greasy. It's like a classic carnival day. It's hot outside, it smells kind of bad, like you could smell the backed up sewage, but you're just excited to eat this corn dog for some odd reason, even though you literally smell sewage. So you go on a ride and you go around and around, you start sweating and this is what you want. You disgust me. Ketchup, mustard, however you do it, little dunk, I don't want to eat this on camera. I feel like I need to use a fork and a knife. But the internet desires this, and so we'll get the internet what they want, I guess. This is what every corn dog should be. When it comes to a good corn dog, it should be crisp on the outside, but cakey on the inside. The hot dog should burst juice into your mouth. Salty, a little bit of sweetness from the dough. Smoky from the dog. Doing it with a hot dog, if I had to choose between these two, I would definitively choose the properly made sausage and you can use whatever you want. You want andouille? Great. You want something a little smokier? Great. Bratwurst? Get a little Germanic, put some German mustard on there? You got a multicultural dog on your hands. So to this one, I would say, and this one, I say, you can choose whichever option you want. You know where I stand. It's delicious, but we gotta take this up a notch and make a Korean style corn dog. Oh yeah. So first off, let's begin with skewering because these need to stay very cold. Get yourself eight skewers yet again, four hot dogs or sausages, cut those bad boys in half like so, so you get eight pieces. Then get yourself a nice block of mozzarella and cut that into eight 2.5 inch rectangular segments. Also, what shape really is this? Is this like a, a rectangular prism? I, I don't know. I didn't go to college, so. All right, to do this properly, first start by skewering a dog with the cut side of it facing upward, then follow that with a piece of mozzarella skewering that lengthwise, and now you have a skewer with half dog, half cheese, 
It's a beautiful thing. Now, once you have all of your skewers, place them on a tray and then into the refrigerator to keep very cold until needed. Next, we're gonna make our yeasted batter. First, start with one cup or 240 milliliters of warm water around 98 Fahrenheit. To that, you're gonna add one teaspoon or four grams of instant yeast, whisk that in, then in a medium-sized bowl, add one and a half cups or 225 grams of all-purpose flour, half a teaspoon or two grams of fine sea salt, three tablespoons or 42 grams of granulated sugar, then give that some whiskey. Then to that, you're gonna add your yeasty milk mixture and whisk together until completely smooth and homogenous. Cover that with plastic wrap, give it a personality with a classy and commendable name, and let that rise for 30 minutes before using. Now, while that's rising, let's prep the rest of our stuff. If you know about Korean corn dogs, then you know about that with potato crust. But I think I have a way to make it even to do that, get yourself two russet potatoes, peel them and cut them into half inch cubes, then place them in a pot, cover with water, season generously with salt, bring to a boil over medium high heat and let those cook for about two to three minutes or until just barely cooked through. Immediately drain them and place them on a sheet tray and in the refrigerator to cool completely and until it's time to prepare. Now, while your potatoes are cooling, the batter is halfway done rising, let's make a quick sweet and spicy gochujang mayo. In a medium bowl, add half a cup or 120 grams of mayonnaise, a quarter cup or 56 grams of sriracha, one tablespoon or 15 grams of gochujang, one tablespoon or 17 grams of honey, one tablespoon or 14 grams of rice vinegar, and finally one teaspoon or five grams of toasted sesame oil. Then just mix all that together and that's your splendidly addicting mayonnaise. Okay, it's assembly time. Yet again, get your batter into a tall skinny glass and get your station put together. We've got our oil set to 350 Fahrenheit. We got three and a half cups or 200 grams of panko breadcrumbs in a nice wide container like this shallow half hotel, or you can use an eight by eight baking pan. The potatoes are cooled and laid out on a baking sheet. And then doing this is very simple, but you need to move fairly quickly. First dunk a cheesy dog to completely coat in the batter, then quickly roll it in the potato to coat all sides, transfer it to your panko while constantly turning to keep the coating from sagging onto one side and generously coat in the panko on every side square inch. Every wet spot needs to be stuck with panko, okay? Every wet spot. Remember what I said about dry spots with fried chicken? It's singles with anything, bro. Tired of explaining it. Then carefully add that to your fry oil. I wouldn't recommend doing more than two to three of these at a time. Then just let that bad boy fry for about three to four minutes or until it turns a beautiful crusted golden brown color. And you can just barely see some of the cheese beginning to ooze out, which means the inside is very cooked and done. Pull it out, place it on a wire rack, and immediately season while it's still hot with a light sprinkle of granulated sugar. Yes, it's traditional and some kosher salt as well. And I mean, look at this thing. It looks like some sort of diamond studded marvel of food on a stick. I can already tell that this is going to have the cheese pool of the century. So let's observe that and see if we've crowned a new corn dog king of the fair food world. Let us taste test. Oh! Are you hearing that? All corn dogs can now cease to exist, please, because this is the greatest corn dog on earth. Now, is it a corn dog? There's no actual corn in this. You could add corn to the batter should you wish, but this is easily one of the greatest foods of all time. I'm not saying that just to be big and astronomical and fancy. If you've never made this before or you've never had this before, let me explain to you that a Korean corn dog will literally change your entire life. You won't stop thinking about them. You're gonna sleep next to this. You're gonna fry one and sleep next to it. This is what you spend the rest of your life with. This is what you get married to. There's no contest. This is the only dog. Maybe not with the spike. You see, what makes this perfect is you get the best of both worlds. It's a best, basically a mozzarella stick corn dog with crispy potatoes and it's crunchy and the panko and it's like katsu and dog and there's so many things all at once. The textures, the crunch, the softness of the potato, the saltiness of the mozzarella, the cheese pull, the chew. <sighs> And the cured sausage in here, bro? No little fatty sausage in your mouth, dude? Get the f out of here. You wanna know what else has Papa's hot wiener battered and fried? B roll. Guys, and that is it. So we made our corn dogs two different ways. We had the original, very, very sort of classic hot dog dip a dang dang thing. Of course, you can make your own hot dogs. I already have a guide for that, and you can go click the link in the description if you wanna learn how to do that. Okay, buddy? And of course, you can put anything else in the traditional corn dog. Ham, maybe it's a big piece of pork belly gone unfried. Why am I doing this voice so much? And then of course, last and definitely not least is the Korean corn dog, the ganja dog. In my opinion, the only way a corn dog should have ever been in the first place, and I'm not sure I'll ever make an original classic version ever again. After tasting that and I hope you feel the same way but with all that said if you enjoyed this video or you learned something leave a like subscribe and I will see you next time